Hello there, and welcome. I'm sure you're all familiar with Kansi, our customer now. The last time we got together, we talked about the importance of getting the lens order in your hands. And I said, this week, we were gonna talk about what it is that I'm looking at, looking for, once I get it into my hands. So that's what we're gonna do. We've got eight scenarios. Ready to go? Ready. All right, let's do it. All right. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks yourself. I'm doing great. Good, how can I help you? Um, I'm here to get some new glasses. Fantastic, oh. do you have a new lens order? I do, I do, I do. I have it ready Let's for you. Let's see what you got. Okay, I'll put this up here for you to see. I have got a right of a minus 125 sphere and a left of a minus one. Very low powers. What it means to me as the optician when I'm gonna guide her towards a frame selection she can do whatever she wants, right? There's not enough power there that it's really gonna matter. Uh, you know, this kind of thing is kind of hot right now with some of the young folks. All right, why don't you try this on for us? Okay, this is a 60i, all right? This thing is just enormous. But you know, if that was what she wanted and insisted on having with powers like this, it really wouldn't care, right? Not gonna matter. I could probably even fudge the PD a little bit to get cut out with a pair from the back. She'd walk out a happy customer. Hello there. Hi there, how are you? Good, thanks, yourself? Doing good, doing good. How can I help you? Um, I'm here to find some fun glasses. Oh, we've got some of that. I know, I've seen them. Do you have a new lens order? Button? I do, yes I do. All right, there let's you see go. what you've got here. I'll throw that up there for you guys so you can see it. I've got a minus 250, minus 75 at 90, a minus 250, minus 50 at 95. All right, I would throw this in the less than three category. It's starting to get in the area where I want to guide her some. She can kind of get away with anything. If she went for this 60i thing over here, we'd kind of have a problem, but just about everything else on the board we can get away with. But I'm starting to think, okay? And we'll talk about flat transposition, power and position, and PD at the whiteboard in just a couple of minutes. But for now, that, that three mark is where I'm starting to get a little bit worried. And she's right there in the middle of 250. I think I can say, you can pretty much choose what you like. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks yourself. Doing good, doing good. Good, how can I help you? Um, I needed to get some new glasses. All right. Yeah. Do you have a new lens order? Buddy? Oh, yes, I do. Excellent. There you go. All right. And I'll put that up there for you guys. 550, 175, 90, 650, 150. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing contacts by any chance? I am. Okay. You're not going to hurt her feelings, okay? She knows that she's got pretty bad eyes. Is this strong? Yes, this could be 750, 850, 950. She's wearing contact lenses. She has to in order to just find, herself, find her way around. She's wearing contacts because she's shopping for frames. She wants to see how she looks in those frames that she's putting on. When I say to her, these are pretty strong powers or something like that, I'm not insulting her. She knows that already, okay? Which lets me also say, okay, with powers like this, when we're looking at the frames, what I want you to do is just go as small as you possibly can. Now, of course, we're gonna make sure they fit properly mm -hmm. width-wise, but this way, okay, this way, as small as you're willing to go. And right now, I would say, you know, look, you know, I know some of the really big stuff is in you know, fashion right now with powers like yours. So we really need to stay as small as we can. Okay. So once you grab a couple, we'll bring them over to the bench and take a look. Okay, sounds okay. good. Now for you newbies, for you frame stylists, for you, the consumers, there is a rule. I would put it perhaps as the number one rule to think about when you are talking about frame choice, and lens powers. And the rule is, as power goes up, your frame size needs to go down. This will never, ever let you down. It is probably the single most important thing to consider when helping guide your customer on power 
and frame choice. From Plano to minus or plus one, who cares? There's not enough power there. They can pretty much choose whatever they want off the board like we just did a moment ago. Minus or plus 125 to three, we start thinking that, hey, this is going up. So my frame size needs to start going down. If you are right in between a 54 and a 52, we're creeping towards that three mark, you're gonna go with that 52. Three to five, you have got to guide your customer to the smallest possible thing that fits them. And no, you have to learn to say no. You can't have the dinner plate specials. It's not gonna work in a five. It's going to be the, the edge thickness, the weight. Your customer is not going to be happy with you if you make them that pair of glasses. There is no magic index. There is no magic material. A minus 650 and a 60i is not going to be thin because you choose a 174. Once you reach the 525 mark and up, you must guide your customer to wear the smallest possible frame that fits. Sometimes you're even getting into a little bit of compromise there. Maybe that 52 is a little tiny bit snug. You're gonna go with that 52 over the 54 when you get into this power and higher. Because as we have discussed in many, many videos, what matters most about finished lens edge thickness is the size of the frame, decentration of course, and feeding the lab good information so they can make that lens as thin as possible. Hello there. Hi, how are you today? Good, thanks yourself. Doing good, doing good. Good, how can I help you? Um, I have a new prescription okay. and I need some new glasses. Fantastic, do you have that prescription on you? I, need I do, I do. Very good. Oh, I see this is our first progressive. Yes. All right, you know, good. Progressive comes with age. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'll throw this one up onto the camera there for you. A plus 250 minus 175 at 90, a plus 150 minus 150 at 95 with an add of 225. And it has the nice note there at the bottom that says, first progressive. Now we had originally started this series working with Amanda Bennett. There's Amanda. She is an amazing person, a great optician. Unfortunately, uh, logistically, it just didn't work out that we could head over to Georgia and shoot this stuff and then come back here and do the editing. Shame, it would have been wonderful, but didn't work out. We were there doing this exact same subject material and we got to, what would you do as far as guiding your frame choice, your customer's frame choice, when they are in a progressive? I said, well, I'd tell them that I need some depth talent towards the cheek. She said, I wouldn't do that. We talked about it. We took lunch and we talked about it some more. And this is kind of what we came up with as a compromise. Guiding frame choice for progressives. If you are a newbie, you're most likely going to want to guide first before having them bring it over to the dispensing table and have to have you say, no, that won't work. Hear me out. If you work in a big box store, guide first. If you are at a place that has the one size fits all lens, the myth of, guide first. If you work in a place that has the one go-to lens, progressive lens, doesn't exist, guide first. If you have little or no choice about which progressive lenses that you can use, one, two, maybe three choices, guide first. If you or your entire store has a lot of remakes, guide first. You're a newbie. I would expect you to have fairly low confidence in what you're doing. It's really hard to backtalk, backtrack. When you get over to the dispensing table, the customers, I love this frame. And you have little confidence and you have to backtrack and say, oh, wow, no, that's not gonna work. Eliminate that possibility by guiding first. 
And what do I mean by guiding first? This is what you're going to say. When you're looking at those frames on the board, we just need a little depth down towards your cheek to make that progressive lens work. That's it. You say this, you can eliminate stuff at the frame board before going over to the dispensing table and save you a lot of trouble because you are looking for that minimum fit height of 18. And there are other videos on that I'll show you in just a second. So you've got your newbie on one side, the folks that I work with, and then you have your experts, the Amandas of the world. And she says, no, I'm going to take that frame. I'm going to let them bring it over to the dispensing table. And then I'm going to decide if I can make it work. You're an independent practice. You're an independent shop. You actually have favorites. You're already thinking as you're looking at that lens power and frames. Oh, I can use the so-and-so lens. You know lens design. You actually are picturing it in your head, which one you're going to choose. You have a big catalog to choose from. You use Laramie K and you've got four, five, six, seven different versions to choose from. You have very low remakes. You're not taking a whole lot of risk here. You know this is probably going to work out fine for you. You have the confidence. You've been doing this for years. You're an expert. You have a rapport with your customers. You can bring those frames over with that narrower B and you can try them on there. If it doesn't work, you have the confidence to say, ah, darn, I really wanted that one. I know you liked it, but it's just not, we just can't squeeze that progressive in there. Let's look at this other one that you liked. Or you may find that you just simply need to use a different lens style, a lens with a shorter corridor, a minimum fitting height of 15, 16, 17, and you have the experience and knowledge to do that. Where will most of us fall? Kind of somewhere in between here. Let's go to the frame board and actually choose some frames. Watch the other videos on this. That one, that one, and that one is really, really good for this also. Everything that we just talked about, the other videos, I am still going to guide her towards something with a little bit of depth down towards the cheek. Now, right now, glasses are kind of mid-sized to large. It's not really an issue. But five years from now, who knows? Everything out fashion is going to be something like this. If she chooses this, and I do not counter that, if I do not explain why she shouldn't, why we need that depth down for the, towards her cheek, for that lens to work for her, even in her first one, even if that ad power was very low, it doesn't matter. Don't set yourself up for failure in the future. So you say this, first progress, so that's great. You're not restricted a whole lot on the power of the lenses, but I would ask if you look for something with a little bit of depth down towards your cheek. So something more that dips down it's in that type perfect. of area. Perfect, yep. Avoid okay. stuff like this. Okay. Go with stuff like this. You're going to be a whole lot happier, especially with that first one. Awesome. Okay. okay. Well, why would something like that with the blue? Very good. That's seems nice. to be my theme today. All right. Hello there. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Yourself? Doing good, doing good. Good. How can I help you? Um, I need new glasses. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Do you have a new lens order? I do. I brought it with me and everything. Excellent. There you go. It's great customers today. Yeah. All right, pop that up there for you. Same exact script, same ad powers, and it just says progressive. So you've been wearing progressives, right? Yes. Yes. yes okay. So well. Okay. So if you were really good, you could probably even pick up just looking at her that she's wearing a progressive lens already. She's familiar with them. Look at the other videos. Why am I again going to insist that she has some depth? Because as she wears progresses, as she gets older, that ad power will increase. You have more power in a shorter distance with those short corridor lenses. It's going to become uncomfortable for her to wear. You want that 18 minimum fitting height in those glasses so that you can spread that 250 out over a nice comfortable range. 
watch the video. So again, progresses. Fantastic. Um, not restricted a whole lot on the powers. I would strongly urge you to go with something with a little bit of depth down here towards the cheek. Avoid stuff like this, okay. right? But certainly this, 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 most of the stuff on the board today is going to be just fine for you. Like something okay. fun like this, even with the round, is deep enough? Absolutely. Awesome. Yep, that should okay. be just fine. We'll double check at the bench. Okay, sounds right. good. Good, thanks. You're welcome. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Yourself? Doing good, doing good. Good. How can I help you? Uh, just need some new frames. Um, I got a new prescription, so I think yeah. I need to just ramp it up a little bit. All right. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Do you have that prescription with you? Oh, yes. I did bring good. it. Throw that up there for you guys. And the note on this one says, where's a straight top? 28. Hmm. Sounds like somebody else I know. All right. There are a couple of things that I'm going to look for here. You had just asked in the last scenario about this one, mm -hmm. right? What we want to avoid with the straight top 28, and we'll talk about PD in a minute when we get to the whiteboard, is stuff that's heavily cut nasally. So when you said, would this work for a progressive? Yeah, it probably would. With a straight top, depending on her PD, we may lose some of that. We may cut it away where we need it most, down in nasally, eye converges for reading. We're gonna be cutting into that segment, not optimal. This one, another good one, heavy cut nasally, probably not the best choice for a straight top 28. Open that up, bring it in a little bit more towards the nose for your straight top 28s. It's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. Height-wise, you're nowhere near as restricted as you are with a progressive lens. You can go into those fit heights of 11 easily with a straight top, depending on your frame shape and everything. But you don't need to be quite as crazy about that depth down towards the cheek as you might be in a progressive lens with a straight top lined bifocal. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Yourself? Doing good, doing good. Good. How can I help you? Uh, I need some sunglasses. All right, yeah. we'll have some fun today. Yeah. Excellent. Do you have a new lens order? Actually, yes, I do. All right. There, there you go. Thank you. All right, and you guys will notice there actually is a note on this that says sunglasses. Um, we won't jump too far down that rabbit hole. There are some people that will write a separate prescription for sunglasses. Um, certainly not necessary, but I guess a clever <clears throat> marketing technique, I suppose. What will I guide her towards? Well, coverage is, I think, the easiest way I would put it. You definitely want to guide her away from really tiny stuff, even though that would make a really cool sunglass, and I've got one like it. Um, I want her to be as happy as possible. She's heading to the beach. She's going on vacation. I want her to be comfortable sitting on the beach by the pool all summer. So we're talking about let's go with something that looks like a traditional sunglass, most likely, and is big enough to give her the coverage that she needs because we're protecting her eyes. That's an important piece of this. Maybe doing polarized, so we may want to do a plastic frame. Unless you can play with bevel position, sometimes you'll get that white band around the lens and polarized with power. So yeah, probably aim towards something like this. I mean, obviously you're free to choose, but you know, were you thinking about something more in the traditional sunglass yes. look? Okay. That's more my, okay. my style. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Okay. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks yourself. Doing good, doing good. Good, how can I help you? Uh, I need some new glasses today. Um, I went and got a prescription and everything, so oh, just... Great. Do you have that with thing. you by any chance? I do, I do. So there you go. You. All right, we'll put this up there for you guys. Hey, minus 125, minus 50 at 90, and minus 225, minus 125 at 90. And the point here is that it's kind of split, and her right eye is kind of weak, kind of nothing. She could probably wear absolutely anything. That left eye is starting to creep up, minus 225 with minus 125 sill. And from here, we are going to jump over to the whiteboard and talk about power, position, and PDs. Part of that interaction with your customer is always looking and thinking about power and position. If I have that 225 minus 125 at 95, I've got 225 at 95, less than three, I'm in the narrower part of my frame, thickness probably not gonna be a big issue. But if you run flat transposition in your head, minus 225 plus a minus 125, I've got 350. I'm over that three mark that we just talked about. 
I need to start being careful. I've got 350 where? Right along here at five. Right? Worst possible place. I wish it was up here, but no such luck. My 350 is going to be here. I'm going to have decentration. I'm going to have edge thickness. A skill you must use. The other thing that you must be aware of when you are working with your customer at the frame board is looking at them and looking particularly for their PD. If you've got a tiny little narrow John PD of 56 and I've got 350 along the 0, 0180, I'm going to have some thickness issues out here. A lot of decentration and there are a ton of videos over on the YouTube site about that. If I have a 60, I'm moving it out a little bit. I'm going to lose a little bit of that thickness on the edge. If I'm perfectly centered, I'm going to have equal thickness on both sides. So you're also thinking about PDs, decentration, and power and position. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Watching us on Facebook, please give us a like. Make certain that every lens that you put into the appropriately sized smaller frame comes from Laramie K. And I'll see you again next week. All of you, you're...